Hey buds, socialism done left here for socialism done short, where I explain a leftist idea in two minutes or less. Today's idea is library socialism, which is what I call an explainer, a quick and easy way to explain a complicated concept. Section 1. The Idea Library socialism explains communal ownership of goods and distribution of goods under socialism. You go to the book library and get a book. You read it, you take it back, and if you don't, you pay a fee. If you need a special book, you put it on hold, and so on for literally every good that society produces. Libraries for cars, libraries for furniture, libraries for clothes. At the libraries, anybody can get goods they desire for little or no cost. Kropotkin called this the pile, Lenin called this the public store, and Marx called this the social stock of the means of consumption because he's a fucking nerd. Section 2. The Good Library socialism is a great explainer in three ways. First, it's familiar. Everybody knows how a library works. Second, it's economic. Instead of bringing up socialism and debating the Holodomor for three hours, try bringing up library socialism and actually debating socialist economics. Third, it's imperfect. It's easy to see how sharing stuff saves resources, labor, space, and gives everybody access to things only the rich had before. It's also easy to see how sharing stuff leads to concerns about hoarding, improper upkeep, and supply meet and demand. This lets you discuss the positives and negatives of socialism without sounding utopian. Section 3. The Bad Library socialism is a bad explainer for three types of goods. First, consumables. Libraries work well for durables that don't get used up, but the folks at the condom library do not want you to return your checkouts. Second, long-term durables. Nobody wants to rent a laptop or kitchen plates or a school backpack and return it after a month. People use these goods until they are broken or outdated. Third, services. It seems a tad bit inhumane to check out a plumber from the handyman library and return them to the front desk a few hours later. Section 4. Conclusion. Library socialism doesn't discuss how these goods actually get produced through some kind of socialist planning, but does paint a nice picture of everyday life under socialism, and always gets me deeper conversations about socialism than mentioning central planning. If you enjoy the idea of library socialism, please check out Seriously Wrong, who I sold this idea from. And if you enjoyed this video, check out the like button, but please return it at the end of the month.